Hey everyone, I'm Terence, a developer relations engineer on Android, specializing in on-device Gen AI, and I'm here with my colleague, Paul. Hey everyone, I'm Paul, a developer relations engineer with Google's ML team. We're very excited to be here with you as part of the AI on Android Spotlight Week. In this video, we'll go through how to experiment with Google's on-device Gen AI solutions powered by both Gemini Nano and open or custom models. First, what is on-device inference and what are its advantages? On-device Gen AI can process prompts directly on your device without any server calls. This offers several key advantages. Sensitive user data is processed locally on the device. The model offers full functionality even with poor internet connectivity. Processing on-device can potentially improve latency, enabling real-time responsiveness. And lastly, there is no additional monetary cost for each inference because on-device Gen AI runs on user hardware. Now, let's take a closer look at Gemini Nano, powered on Android by the System Service AI Core. Gemini Nano is the smallest of Google's powerful Gemini family of models. It is Android's model of choice for on-device inference. AI Core handles all interactions between the app, the Gemini Nano model, and hardware accelerators on behalf of each app. As a result, apps only need to call the Google AI Edge SDK and run their Gen AI workloads and don't have to worry about maintaining or updating their own models. Another benefit of Gemini Nano is that it's distributed as a system service, so users don't have to repeatedly download it for each app that uses it. Gemini Nano is already transforming key Google apps. To date, Pixel Screenshots, TalkBack, Messages, and many more have leveraged Gemini Nano to deliver delightful generative AI features for their users. Gemini Nano has also been available to a closed set of external partners through our early access preview announced in 2023. Today, we're very excited to announce that we're opening up experimental access of the latest Gemini Nano model, starting with its text-to-text -text capabilities to the Android developer community. Let's start with a quick look at the performance of this model. We'll then walk you through how you can try it out in your own apps on eligible devices. The latest Gemini Nano model, also known academically as Nano 2, comes with multimodal capabilities and is nearly twice as large as the previous iteration. This makes the quality out of the box much better for most use cases. TalkBack and Pixel Screenshots have already implemented amazing new features using the new multimodal capability on Gemini Nano. Both the MMOU of the model and its performance with real-world use cases is markedly better than the previous generation, Nano 1. The model's MMLU benchmark metric went up by 10%, and the math metric went up by 9%. But we know how the model performs in the real world is just as important as how it performs on academic benchmarks. That's why we built an auto rater powered by Gemini 1.5 Pro to determine good answers on public data sets from each model for real world use cases. Here, we see that the paraphrasing metric increased from 44% to 90% for Nano 2 when compared to Nano 1. For Smart Reply, the metric went from 44% to 82%. Great, now that you've learned all about our newest model, check out our sample app for an easy way to experiment with it. It's available on GitHub for you to download and experiment with. It has a chatbot format, so it makes it easy to type in your prompt and inference data and see the model's output. You can also adjust some of its parameters, like temperature, which controls the randomness of responses, top K, which limits the model's predictions to the most probable tokens at each step of generation, and min and max reply length. Try to change these up and see what it does to your response. The sample app also shows how you can access Gemini Nano using AI Edge SDK in both Java and Kotlin, so you can use it as a reference if you want to experiment with Nano in your own app. Now, let's dive into more detail on the AI Edge SDK and how you can set it up for testing. Before we get started, ensure that you're setting up your testing environment properly. You'll need to agree with our experimental terms of service, join the right Google group, and join the beta group for the AI Core app in order to access the AI Edge SDK. You can see more info about this in our developer docs, which you can access after agreeing to the terms of service. Please follow along there as you try out the APIs. Once you're ready, 
Add the dependency for the AI Edge SDK into your app's Gradle file. Create the generation config object to customize how the LLM should be running the inference. This includes temperature, which controls randomness, higher values increase diversity, top K, which specifies how many tokens from the highest ranking ones are to be considered, candidate count, which describes the maximum number of unique responses to return, max output tokens, which is the length of the desired response. We encourage you to experiment with these configurations and see what works best for you. Create a download callback, the callback function used to help you know when the model and feature downloading is done, and you can start your inference. It can also be used for debugging purposes, such as recording any model download issues that may occur. Next, create the generative model object with the download and generation configs that you created earlier. This sets you up to run inference. Run the inference with the model and pass in your prompt. Since generative model.generate content is a suspend function in Kotlin, we need to make sure it's in the right coroutine scope to launch. Note that if you have multiple strings for your input, you can also create a content object with each line of text and pass that into generate content as a parameter. Here are a few general suggestions to help improve your testing experience with Gemini Nano. First, Gemini Nano is stateless, so each inference is independent from the past inference. That means that if you want to reference an answer that Gemini Nano provided in a previous conversation, you'll need to add that context to your prompt. Few shot prompting is a way to make language models smarter. It's like giving your model a quick lesson before asking it to do something. Instead of just giving it a prompt, you give it a few examples of what you want it to do, and then your model can use that knowledge to do a better job for your request. Here's an example of what you can do for smart replies using emojis. When we just ask a model to predict the emojis as a response to text messages without giving it any examples, it just gives five copies of the same emoji. However, after providing it with several examples of what you'd like it to do, it was able to provide two different emojis and even separate them with a comma. Lastly, we encourage you to be more specific with your request since Gemini Nano models are much smaller than cloud-based equivalents. For example, instead of simply asking the model to paraphrase the text, you may try to ask it to paraphrase the text in an excited mood while keeping as much of the original meaning as possible. Gemini Nano is a performant model, and our enabling infrastructure makes it easy to integrate it into your app for production. However, open models are also gaining popularity amongst researchers, and it's now possible to experiment with them on Android via the MediaPipe Tasks LLM API. Here's Paul to tell you more about it. Hey again to everyone watching, Paul here. And today I'm going to introduce you to Google AI Edge's MediaPipe Task LLM Inference API. You can use this task to run custom LLMs, such as a fine-tuned Gemma 2B model, directly on your Edge devices, including Android, iOS, and web. Today I'm going to focus on this task for Android and how you can get started with large language models directly on a mobile device. The first thing you need to do is import the MediaPipe task Gen AI dependency into your app. After you've added that dependency to your build file and synced your project, it's time to dive into the Kotlin code. Luckily, despite everything that needs to happen to allow an LLM to run on an Android device, MediaPipe task has abstracted it enough to actually be fairly simple to implement. To get started, you'll need to create a new options object that is used for configuring the LLM inference API. This allows you to do a lot to customize how the API works, including setting the top K and temperature used by the sampler, allocating the max number of tokens that can be returned in a response, and defining the paths to your large language model on the user's device, as well as any LoRa weights that can be used for further customizations. At this point, it's also worth mentioning that since this is all on-device machine learning inference, the model that you're using does need to exist on the user's device often by downloading it from a remote source before using the API. Finally, you'll attach a results listener that will receive every token generated by your model before creating the LLM interpreter object that handles all of the major work. With the setup done, you can simply call generate response async to asynchronously generate tokens, or use the generate response method to generate all of the tokens before returning the finished results to the caller. And then that's pretty much it. 
If you want to have a bit more control over conversation flow, there's additional things that you can look into, such as starting and ending tokens that denote when a response is started and ended. But that's honestly kind of a larger topic for another time. You can find a complete working Android example on GitHub, which I'll link to in the video description, as well as a lot more information in our official documentation. So be sure to check those out and try the MediaPipe Task LLM Inference API for your Android apps. If you want to learn more about other features of MediaPipe Task, you can also find my complete Android video series in this video's description. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Terrence. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. In this video, we've explored the exciting world of on-device generative AI on Android with its unique advantages. We also covered more details for you to experiment with Google's on-device Gen AI solutions, including both Gemini Nano and Media Pipe Tasks LLM Inference API. Gemini Nano and its supporting app AI Core provides developers with an on-device Gen AI solution without needing to download or maintain models. It's Android's foundation model of choice for on-device Gen AI. For researchers who may want to experiment with open models, the Media Pipe Tasks LLM Inference API is a good fit. To experiment with Nano and Media Pipe, follow the instructions in the respective documentation pages or experiment with the respective sample apps. Happy experimenting, and we can't wait to see what you build. To learn more about AI on Android, check out our other resources in the AI in Android Spotlight Week. Use hashtag Android AI to share your feedback or what you've built on social media, and join us at the forefront of the AI revolution.